Starting things off now at number 10, we have the Skinwalker. In 2014, Facebook blew up with reports of a creepy looking creature captured by a geologist working near the Hikaria Reservation in New Mexico. Now he apparently saw something odd and decided to take a heat signature picture of it and this is what he saw. Thousands of people shared this post on Facebook with many referring to it as a Skinwalker, which is a shapeshifter in some Native American culture. Well, although some people still claim it's some sort of horrific creature, others say it's actually from a 1980s science fiction movie called Extra, where a monster is spotted by the side of a road. Indestructible, ever changing, evil. Yeah, if that's the case. Don't think I'm gonna watch that movie, because it's still pretty creepy. Moving on to number nine, we have The Fallen Angel of Catalonia. This is from June 2006 and was filmed in the forest near the town of Camp de Vanol. Two guys were out on the hunt for a creature, but seemed to bite off a bit more than they could chew. Some people called that a demon, an angel, or even a vampire, while others said there were videos out there showing the men setting up this video and that it was a hoax. Pretty creepy hoax though. Moving on to number 8, it's the Hook Island Monster. Over the years there have been a number of reports of a dark, mysterious and massive monster lurking in the waters near Australia's Cook Island. This image was taken by Robert Le Sarek on a family holiday in 1964. The massive tadpole like creature wasn't moving and so Robert jumped in the water to film it thinking that it was dead but suddenly it swam towards him, opened its mouth up and Robert jumped back in the boat and the Hook Island monster swam away. Now theories about the Hook Island monster range from it being a prehistoric beast to tightly swimming fish in a ball or even large plastic sheets weighed down by sand. The only thing we know for sure though is that it came about 20 years before Photoshop was even invented so it couldn't have been that. At number 7 now we have have the Cooper family photo. In 2013, the picture we're going to show you started floating around the internet with the story that the Cooper family of Texas bought a house in the 1950s and on their first night they were staying there, they took the picture you're going to see now. It wasn't until they got it developed that they saw this. Yeah, I would actually run a mile if I saw that. Absolutely terrifying. Suddenly this picture was everywhere online with people saying it was an evil spirit or maybe the ghost of a former resident, but others said there are clear signs of photoshopping or double exposure. Some said the lighting isn't falling on the ghost in the right way that it should and that proves it's a fake. But I don't think ghosts are known for caring about the laws of physics. What do you guys think of all of this? Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Wessex Way Monster. This footage was taken on a road in Dorset, England in 2007 after CCTV cameras picked up a strange creature crossing the road. It wasn't the first time anyone had heard of it, but it was the first time it was properly caught on camera. Check it out. I mean... It looks like some sort of werewolf, right? So is it some sort of beast that's gone under the radar till now? Or is it, as some people say, just a deer with no antlers? Yeah! Oh dear. Next up we have an elephant seal attacking a car. Elephant seals can reach up to 13 feet in length with a weight of a whopping 4,500 pounds. Just imagine this big boy like throwing all of its size on you. You'd be flattened into, a, into a, like a cartoon pancake. Speaking of cartoons, this little guy's name is Homer, which is exactly what he should be named. I can't think of a better name for this guy. But just look at how these cars shake as it smashes its head into them. It doesn't even look like it's trying that hard. It's just having a bit of fun here. So again, just picture it crashing its 4,500 pound frame into your measly human body. We just really forget how fragile we are sometimes. As threatening as this guy is though, he somehow manages to look cute and lovable at the same time. I'd much rather meet Homer here than the next animal we have on the list. Yeah, we're, we're back to the creepy crawly with the giant weta. These massive insects can be found in New Zealand. There are 11 species of giant weta, with the largest being the Little Barrier Island giant weta. Now, these things won't bite you. They aren't poisonous or anything like that, but I'm 
just yeesh. In this YouTube video uploaded by Minos Nature New Zealand, we see our cameraman come across one of these giant crickets in the daytime, which is rare. They typically only come out at night. At one point, he puts his hand beside it for perspective, and uh, yeah, surprise, surprise, as you can see, it's big. It's, I'd just be scared waiting for this thing to get startled and hop off. Apparently, they're too heavy to hop like regular crickets, but uh, I'd still be bracing myself for it just in case. I haven't been able to find any audio of them chirping either, but I imagine it's not quite as relaxing as regular crickets chirping. It's gotta be like deafening. Here's one you've probably seen if you tune into Shark Week every summer. At number three, we have Deep Blue. Deep Blue is something of a celebrity shark. She's a great white who's known for her massive size. She's around 20 feet in length and is estimated to weigh around 4,400 pounds. She's one of the biggest great white sharks ever filmed. She's basically the real life Jaws, except she's thankfully far less aggressive. In fact, she seems quite docile. There's footage of divers swimming alongside her. A couple of them have even touched her fins. Not a smart idea. Not even just for the obvious fact that you're getting way too close to an animal that could eat you like a two bite brownie, but it's also just kind of harassing the animal. Uh, but speaking of that, at number two, we have a giant anaconda. In this next video, we see a crew of fishermen pursuing the Loch Ness Monster in the Santa Maria River in Brazil. Honestly, it really does look like some kind of mythical sea serpent moving through the water. Just look at how girthy its body is. It's likely that the snake had recently eaten. That's why it has this big swollen section of its body. Even, but even without that though, the rest of it is also huge. It's, uh, it's obviously digesting something. One of these guys uh, grabs the snake by the end of the tail and they try to drag it out of the river, which is awful. They ended up receiving a pretty hefty fine for this, rightfully so. Not only is it mean to the animal though, but is this really the type of creature you want to piss off? Sure, anacondas, they're not poisonous, uh, but their, their bodies are basically just one big muscle and their jaws are also very powerful. I can't even imagine how long this one is. We never actually see its head, but uh, from what we do see of it, the thing is an absolute beast. And taking that number one spot, we have a giant squid. Giant squids are really cool because at one point in time, they were simply thought of as a myth until it was discovered that they do indeed exist. Makes me wonder what other deep sea creatures there are dwelling down there. Now, there isn't a whole lot of giant squid footage as they inhabit the deep depths of the sea, but in this video taken by divers off the west coast of Japan, they captured a live giant squid on camera. This one measuring around two and a half meters or just over eight feet, which is crazy. Like that's bigger than any like person on, well, not any person on earth, but most people on earth. It's scary imagining swimming next to something this large, but at the same time, there's also something so peaceful about the way it moves through the water. It's very beautiful. This isn't even the biggest giant squid on record though, not even close. Somewhere in the depths of the sea, there's like a real life kraken floating around, I bet. Hopefully one day we can See footage of that. Let's start off at number 10 now with the dodo. The dodo is one of the most famous extinct animals of all time, responsible for coining the phrase as dead as a dodo. The last of these birds was thought to have died out in 1662. They were only found on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. They lived in harmony with the ecosystem there and had no natural predators until humans arrived and killed them off for food. Scientists discussed the possibility of bringing back the dodo from extinction during a TEDx discussion in Washington, D.C. In 2013, the dodo's closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon, and some say that one of its eggs could be fused with the cell of a dodo to create a living dodo. Imagine if that happened. It would ruin that phrase. Next up at number nine now, we have the mammoth. Now this is perhaps the most famous extinct animal of all time. Society has been obsessed with these woolly elephant cousins for decades. Interesting fact for you guys, although most of them did die out about 10,000 years ago, a small population of mammoths survived on Wrangell Island off the coast of Russia until just 3,600 years ago. That's nothing if you think about it. Humans were running around at the end of the Bronze Age during then. Anyway, because of how recently 
they died out and how many of their bodies became frozen in the permafrost, scientists have actually been able to extract cells from mammoth remains. The plan is then to splice specific mammoth genes into the genome of an elephant embryo to create a sort of mammoth elephant hybrid with all the mammoth traits we recognize. Now this isn't just for no reason either. Some scientists say that these new mammoths could help prevent tundra permafrost from melting and releasing huge amounts of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the thylacine. This species died out in the 1930s after being hunted to extinction in its native Australia. It may look like a dog, but the thylacine actually belonged to the marsupial family and was a relative of kangaroos and koalas. A group of Australian scientists led by Michael Archer have previously worked on bringing back the thylacine from extinction. They called themselves the Lazarus Project. Their efforts only managed to capture some of the fragments of the thylacine DNA though, and not enough for a true clone. Still, even this was enough for people to see the thylacine as a strong candidate for eventual de-extinction. Next up at number 7 now, we have the gastric brooding frog. This little frog was native to the eastern coast of Australia and went extinct less than 100 years ago. It got its name from its interesting method of reproduction. The females would swallow their fertilized eggs, which would then hatch into tadpoles in the frog's stomach before being vomited out into the water. It sounds gross, but it definitely worked. Because of how recently they went extinct, scientists recovered enough genetic material to create living embryos. They haven't been used to create an actual gastric brooding frog yet, but some argue that even this means they are already back from extinction. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Bucardo. The Bucardo was a wild goat native to the Pyrenees. The last one, a female named Celia, died in January 2000. Scientists preserved her cells and attempted to bring the species back from the dead. They injected the nuclei from Celia's cells into goat eggs that had been emptied of their DNA. They then implanted 57 of them into different goat surrogate mothers of closely related species. Only 7 of them became pregnant and 6 of those had miscarriages. One of the goats successfully gave birth to a clone though. Fernandez Arias held the newborn calf in his arms. He said it was struggling to breathe and all of their attempts to help failed. The calf died just 10 minutes later. It was found to have a faulty lung caused by a genetic defect. At the time, it was the closest the world has ever come to de-extinction and still remains a possible candidate. Coming in number 5 now, we have the sewer monster. This video was taken in April 2011 and the story goes that it was released by a water company who had a camera attached to some sort of robot in the sewers as they did a routine check of them. Huh, what was that? Well, if you want to look a little closer, then a little while later, this happened. Eventually, some people expose the water company as a supposed fake, but others are saying that it's all a cover up and that there really are some strange alien looking creatures lurking in the English sewers. So, if you're watching this video from England, just check your toilet before you sit down. On to our number four now, and it's coming to you from Saudi Arabia, where sometime in 2014, this footage emerged of a supposed witch chasing a man down a dark back country road. Sounds pretty scary. Check it out. Personally, I think the guy's moaning might almost be as scary as the supposed witch. <laughs> There have been stories online of people being turned away at the border near where this was filmed in Saudi Arabia for carrying items of witchcraft. Now, could this be one of those people? But others have said the fact that it was uploaded with the comedy tag on YouTube is all the proof they need to see that this was a big fat joke. Moving on to number 3, we have a goblin running across a kitchen floor in Argentina as a mother films her 2 year old child. Check it out. Okay, that would definitely scare me if I saw that. It's definitely creepy and has sparked a lot of online debate with some people saying it's real and some people saying it's obviously not because the shadows don't line up properly between the goblin and the leg of the table. Personally, if I was an animator and I wanted to trick millions of people into thinking that I saw a goblin, I'd line up the shadows. It's not too hard. And now coming in at number two, we have the giant spider creature. The footage you're about to see came from Russia 
Asia where an amateur filmmaker apparently caught a massive monster creature with huge arms and legs climbing onto a building. What do you guys think of it? Well check it out. Some people have said it's difficult to figure out if it's real or not because the day was quite overcast, quite cloudy, so there's no shadows to really examine, but personally, I think it's obviously fake. I know, it just looks like animation, but that's just me. What do you guys think? And finally, at number one, we have the four occupants. This one I really like. Whenever Stella Lansing from Massachusetts took pictures, strange lights and orbs would appear on the film. At first, she wasn't taken seriously, but that all changed in 1967. She was on the road when she snapped some pictures of bright objects darting around the sky. She filmed them before they flew off into the sky, but the weirdest was yet to come. Stella put the images through a projector, which slowed them down to two frames a second, and this is what she saw. Four humanoids that were dubbed the four occupants. What's even creepier is that a documentary team took the 8mm film and put it onto VHS, and this is what they heard. Starting off this countdown, we have the extinct bat. In 2019, the Hills horseshoe bat species were spotted for the first time in 40 years. The bats are home to a Rwandan rainforest. Scientists figured that they were endangered and had gone extinct already, since they hadn't seen them in years. That was until 2019 when scientists were on a 10 day expedition and they came across these little guys. But when they first captured the bat, they didn't know how great their discovery was going to be. One scientist said, and I quote, We knew immediately that the bat we had captured was unusual and and remarkable. The facial features were exaggerated to the point of being comical. It took them three years to then identify what species this bat belonged to. Once they did, that's when they realized that this bat was brought back to life. In our ninth spot, we have Catagonus wagneri. Back in the day, this animal was discovered from early fossil records. They were thought to be extinct and people only knew about them because of the fossils. That was until 1974. That's when a biology professor from University of Connecticut rediscovered them while on a research expedition. In fact, the species was well known to the native people there. However, they are badly endangered. A huge population of them live in a 2400 acre area in Grand Chaco. They hide out in the bushy thorny areas so that they're safe from predators and local hunters. Sadly, only approximately 3000 remain in the world. Moving on to number 8, we have Tarsier. Now these guys are undeniably cute. Just look at its eyes, like they're so cute and big for its tiny little body. But strangely enough, scientists still don't know much about them. One of the reasons being is that scientists thought that they went extinct in the 1920s. But in May of the early 2000s, while checking a rat trap that they had set in the forest, scientists discovered that they had actually caught a pygmy tarsier. Sadly, it had died in the trap. But that's what let them know that they were still alive, minus that one. Then in 2008, researchers found a family of them in Lore Lindu National Park. Nowadays, it's believed that there are only 5,000 to 10,000 of these animals in the whole world. And that number is sadly falling again instead of rising. Now this is because these little creatures don't live too long in captivity. In fact, when they are in distress, they apparently try to take their own lives. So that's a reason why it's hard to look after these little guys and keep them off the endangered list. In our seventh spot today, we have the Goblin Shark. Now if you all have been a fan of this channel for a while, then you guys know that I hate this guy. Like I'm not scared of sharks, but this guy, like he's terrifying. He doesn't even look like a shark. He looks like a mutated shark. Like a shark that scientists tried to cross with a human or something. Anyways, goblin sharks were believed to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891 when researchers spotted it off the coast of Japan. Instantly, they were confused, but also scared because again, look at this thing. What they found the weirdest though is that this shark barely changed over time. They didn't evolve at all. They still look the exact same, hence why they are called a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now the scariest part about them is that they have these weird ligaments in their jaw and that allows them to extend their mouths out and snatch up their prey. Plus, their mouths launch out 
pretty fast. That's also why it makes their mouth look so creepy, you know? In our sixth spot, we have the tequila fish. And it's a very interesting name for a fish. I hope their relatives are called the vodka fish. So these fish disappeared from the Mexican wild in 2003. This was due to pollution and invasive species. People thought there was no hope that these fish were just gonna die off. But turns out that conservationists were able to bring them back to life after a decades long operation. Basically, scientists at Michoacana University in Mexico took five pairs of these fish in 1998. They then kept the fish safe, studied them, and then they made them reproduce to develop a larger colony. After four years in artificial ponds, scientists were able to increase these five fish to 10,000. However, only 1,500 were released back into the wild. And apparently, the released fish are thriving and reproducing out in the wild. Moving on to number five now, we have the quagga. The quagga is an extinct subspecies of the plain zebra and lived in South Africa. The last wild quagga was hunted to extinction in 1878. The last captive one died in Amsterdam five years later. And because of their close relationship to the plain zebra, some scientists have created the quagga project, which is attempting to use selective breed breeding to create a new subspecies that strongly resembles the quagga. In 2016, the project announced they had six individuals showing the preferred pattern. The goal is to have 50 of them and then move them to a protected area for continued breeding. Will this count as the quagga being brought back from extinction? Let me know what you think. All right, moving on to number four now, we have Stella's sea cow. This sea mammal was discovered by Europeans in 1741 on Bering Island in the Northern Pacific Ocean. It went extinct just 27 years later after being hunted for its meat, fat, and hide. It belonged to a group of species known as Dugongidae. The only surviving species of that group is now the dugong. Some scientists hope that if enough sea cow DNA can be recovered, they can fuse it with the egg of a dugong and bring back the sea cow from extinction. One major problem though is size. Modern dugongs are just a fraction of the size of the extinct sea cow, so the pregnancy would be extremely difficult. Let's just say that. It's a problem that's still being being worked on though. Next up at number three now, we have the passenger pigeon. Okay, this one might not be as cool as some of the other animals on our list, but give it a chance. In the 1860s, there were billions of these pigeons across North America. One account said that a flock once passed over southern Ontario that was a mile wide, 300 miles long, and took 14 hours to pass overhead. Less than 50 years later, they were extinct, mainly due to mass hunting. Enough specimens have been preserved so that scientists could reconstruct the bird's entire genome. The plan would then be to fuse this with the egg of the passenger pigeon's closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. However, there is no guarantee that the band-tailed pigeon will then tend to the egg or even look after any successful hatchlings. Next to number two now, we have the auroch. About 10,000 years ago, the prehistoric settlers of India and Eurasia domesticated the auroch, an animal that looks a lot like a cow. That's because all modern day cattle are the descendants of the auroch. The auroch itself went extinct in the wild but scientists are hoping to bring it back through back breeding cattle. This is where they breed cattle together that resemble the auroch. They then take the calves that most resemble the auroch and breed them, etc, etc, until eventually you get something that looks a lot like an auroch. One example of this that's already happened is heck cattle. Here's some pictures of them now. However, some people have debated whether these even really look like auroch. They're also a lot smaller too. Maybe they will get there one day though. And finally, number one now, we have the Carolina parakeet. This bird was hunted to extinction 100 years ago. It was native to the eastern US, which surprised me because its plumage would suggest it was much more tropical. Its feathers were also the reason it went extinct. Many of them were hunted so that the feathers could be used in women's hats, which were fashionable at the time. Some remained as pets or in captivity, but eventually they all died out. Now, as with many others on our list, their extinction being quite recent is a reason why they could make a good candidate for de-extinction. Some people worry though that if it was brought back, history would just repeat itself all over again as their feathers would instantly become valuable. Let's not in at number 10. Whoa, that guy's fast. What is that? His nose is like so long. Is this real? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know how to research this little guy. 
Okay, well, apparently that was the elephant shrew, last known to be seen over 50 years ago, but it was rediscovered in August of 2020. These mighty little mouse-like creatures are thriving in Africa. Pretty cool something so small was able to evade a full extinction. So before we get into number nine, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video because it really helps us out. All right, let's see what we have in at number nine. The Tarsier is named. <laughs> Whoa! Hello there, freaky. The Tarsier is named after its long, impressive bone. In its ankle, you perv. Okay, whoa, what is this little thing? So the animals on this list are pretty tiny. This one is no different. The pygmy taser of the taser family of the world's smallest primates hails from the depths of Indonesia. The taser still lives, but its pygmy's cousin is said to have been extinct until a man accidentally captured and killed one in a mouse trap in 2000. Since then, several pygmy tasers have been found and tagged in Indonesia, and it is believed that they no longer exist. Great big, thin, membranous ears and those sharp teeth. More like those you'd see on a bat. Okay, wait, first of all, I thought these things were cute, but they're, they're pretty creepy if you ask me. Apparently these guys are adept predators for being able to fit in your palm of your hand. Pretty wild, but anyone else getting like the baby Yoda vibes from this? Perhaps it could live many centuries. Next up at number 8, the terror skink, thought once to be extinct. Well this video shows a man who found one in Caledonia in 2018. These little things were said to be the T-Rex of their time, serious meat eating predator reptiles. They got their name from their mouthful of sharp teeth. So this skink is the top predator here on this island in New Caledonia, there's no doubt that this guy is the T-Rex of this island. Number seven, is this real life right now? What is that? There's no way that thing existed in our life. Like what world was that real? And those sharks are like, when they eat things, their, their mouths come out of their mouths and it's just like, it's, it's so horrifying. Here's another picture. I mean, it looks like it's, it's real. It, apparently these things went extinct many years ago, but now it has been rediscovered. This last picture right here looks so real and it looks like it's kind of like slimy. And this one doesn't look like it was taken in the water. This one looks like it was captured, it was taken out of the water. But you can see what I'm saying about like the mouth. I'm not sure where it begins and where it ends, but is it just me or is its teeth like exactly spaced out? Kind of creepy, sharp teeth. I'd be scared if I was like swimming and I saw one of these. Okay, so the images that we were seeing is actually the goblin shark. You guys can search it online. You guys can see so many more pictures of this. Well, it was actually said to be extinct over 125 million years ago. But like other deep sea creatures, it didn't actually disappear, it didn't go extinct. It just hid in the depths beyond human discovery and it is said to be back and is thriving. These pictures were taken from National Geographic in 2020, so just months ago. It it was actually in August. So the images you're seeing is legit. Moving right along to number six, move on murder wasp Wallace giant bee or the mega chili Pluto is said to be back in action. In 2018, two of these bad boys were available for the highest bidder and none other than eBay itself, the place where we're buying Pokemon cards. I just came across a Charizard, 25 grand. Should I buy it? <laughs> Okay, so apparently you can buy this creature, like you can make a transaction if you have $9,000. In 2019, a single female was found in a termite nest and reopened the species as no longer being extinct. Well, here's a clip that I wanted to share with you guys. So 100% authentic and to scale. Okay, maybe not, but could you guys imagine like that was the size of the killer bees? Like just absolutely massive. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the coelacanth. You're not gonna believe this, but these fish were around when dinosaurs roamed the earth. In fact, they were believed to have gone extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then, millions of years later, they were rediscovered. In the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought they went extinct 
moved around 66 million years ago. So it shocked scientists quite a bit when in 1938 they rediscovered them off the coast of South Africa. They're just alive and thriving. In our fourth spot, we have the singing dog. This animal has been named the singing dog due to their distinctive howl. Sometimes they howl together to form kind of like a choir. Apparently, their howls sound like a cross between a wolf's howl and a whale's song. They are also called the New Guinea Highland dogs and are closely related to the Australian dingo. Now, wildlife biologists thought that these animals went extinct sometime in the 1970s. However, in 2016, they were rediscovered in a remote region of New Guinea. Tests were run on them and it was confirmed that they were the same breed. In our third spot, we have the tree lobster, which is not an animal, so I'm technically cheating having it on today's list because it's an insect, but who cares, okay? The tree lobster is a large black stick insect. In fact, it is said to be one of the rarest insects on earth. Back in the day, they were popular for fishing as they were used for fishing bait. But by the 1920s, they were said to be extinct. Basically, a ship accidentally crashed onto an island and rats aboard the ship got introduced onto the island and threatened these species. But later on, a pair of Australian scientists discovered 24 of these bugs living beneath a single shrub. They ended up taking two pairs, breeding them, and then reintroducing more of these these insects to help repopulate them. In our second spot today, we have the night parrot. Night parrots are often referred to as one of the world's most mysterious birds. They were first discovered in 1845 and were extremely rare to spot. That's because they come out at night and only in remote areas. Even then, there had not been a single sighting of these birds for a hundred years, so they were declared extinct. That was until 1979 when a number of them were spotted again. In fact, this bird is the holy grail for bird watchers. Some spend decades hoping to get a glimpse of this bird up close. And in our number one spot today, we had the Kashmir musk deer. But I like to call them the vampire deer because they have vampire fangs. So these deer are native to Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, and Western Nepal. It was believed that they went extinct in 1948 until they were rediscovered in 2009. However, they are badly endangered. It's said that there are less than 5,000 musk deer throughout the world. The main reason being is because they are a very popular target for hunters. Hunters like to kill them for their musk glands, which are often used in perfumes. They are said to be a rare aphrodisiac and can sell for around $45,000 per kilogram. Now, it is illegal to hunt for them, but that still doesn't stop people. Okay, starting off at number 10, like we always do, we have the Megatherium. This animal is also known as a giant ground sloth, and they were one of the largest terrestrial animals that ever lived on this planet. They measured in at about 20 feet in length, but they were a slow moving herbivore, so animals didn't really fear this creature. Early humans in South America hunted this massive creature, and they hunted it to its extinction 10,000 years ago, or did they? In the deep jungle of South America, there are so many tales about terrifying creatures who stands at 10 feet tall. They have enormous backward facing claws and thick brown fur. All of these characteristics are consistent with the Megatherium's description. So maybe these aren't just stories. Next up, number nine, we have the Mastodon. These hairy creatures are prehistoric relatives of the modern elephant. Mastodons have tusks, floppy ears, and a long nose, which is very similar to the elephant. Mastodons appeared on Earth about 27 million to about 30 million years ago, primarily in North and Central America. They typically stayed in the woodlands areas or sometimes around valleys and swamps. They apparently went extinct about 10,000 years ago and most of the theories say that they went extinct because a lot of the scientists believe that the Earth warmed up too quickly from the Ice Age for the Mastodon to adapt to or that humans hunted them to extinction. So although they went extinct so long Long ago, a man named David Ingram described seeing creatures twice the size of a horse, hairy, and in the shape of an elephant. He accurately described what a mastodon would look like, and he said he saw them while he was traveling to the United States. There are even other people claiming to have spot these creatures in modern times. Next up, number eight, we have the Japanese wolf. Japan used to have two species of wolf that used to live on islands. Biologists consider the Japanese wolf to be extinct, however, 
there are a ton of rumors circulating of people seeing them in the wild regions of Japan. These two wolf species became extinct in the late 1800s and the early 1900s due to rabies, loss of habitat, and hunting by humans. Despite their extinction, a Japanese wolf was sighted in 1910 and then in the 1930s and then again in the 1950s. If that wasn't enough to convince you that these creatures are still alive today, there have been a ton of sightings in the 1900s. Skeptics believe the humans are mistaking a hybrid wolf dog for the Japanese wolf. That's definitely a possibility, but what if the Japanese wolf was still alive today? Pouncing in at number 7, we have the Javan Tiger. They are a relatively small tiger that is as tall as a Great Dane. On the island of Java in Indonesia, this was the home of the Javan Tiger, but as humans occupied more and more of the island, the Javan Tiger was forced to move to the uninhabitable parts of the island. They were hunted by the humans so they could make more room for farming, and unfortunately by the time the government stepped in to preserve their species, the tiger was already too far gone. However, many locals have spotted Javan tiger claw marks and footprints and they could still be alive because they are excellent at hiding and avoiding humans. Also in 1995, a Javan forester discovered a large group of these tigers still living on the island. These sightings continued into the early 2000s and people are still finding evidence that the species still exists today. Swimming into our number 6 spot on our list, we're talking about the Plesios. This is apparently an extinct marine reptile who lived approximately 135 years ago in the Jurassic period. They have long necks, thin bodies, wide flippers, and small heads. They have very sharp teeth and incredibly strong jaws, so they're able to feed on any fish that came in their path. Creatures matching this description have been spotted all over the world in lakes and in oceans. A lot of people believe that this animal exists and people are just calling it the Loch Ness Monster. It is actually possible that these animals survived and they're just living in the depths of the ocean where humans are unable to explore. If this plesiosaurus still exists today, that would also explain why people have reported seeing sea dragons from around the world. Moving right along, number five, what sound does a deer make? Go in the comment section and tell me. I, I don't know how you're gonna tell me a sound, like, well, a cow would just be M O O O O O. For a deer, I don't know how you would type out the sound of a deer, but we're not bringing you just any deer on this list. The Kashmir musk deer has been endangered, extinct, and back to endangered again. I mean, how does this even happen? Is this real life right now? One was discovered again in 2009 and they were back on the endangered list once again, likely because these guys are targeted for hunting because of their musk glands, which are said to be an aphrodisiac and can go for a whopping $45,000 on the black market. And just like that, number four, these five inch freaks are also known as three lobsters and they were thought to be completely eradicated decades ago in a small island off the coast of Australia. But 24 were found in 2001, and they were sent to a zoo in Australia, which has led them to the successful breeding and repopulation of these creatures. Whoa. That's kind of, that's like a like a stick a stick insect, right? What does that what does that remind you? Of? It's like a I don't know I don't know what it is. But it's so, it's just so creepy. Okay, well obviously that was the tree lobsters. You know what, it kind of looks like it has like the scales of a lobster. The tree part is, is like the, uh, the, the tree stick thing that I was referring to. Yeah, you guys are seeing a picture right now of, of those stick insects. It's pretty, they're pretty cool, but I don't know, I don't know what they do. I don't know much about them. From there, number three. <laughs> What the, is, is that just a dog? Like a, this, this breed of dog went extinct and now it's back and now it's howling for werewolves? It's howling for its werewolf mates? Doesn't sound like a normal dog, so maybe this is like a different creature. Well, this species of dog is actually called New Guinea Singing Dog and hails from Papua New Guinea. 
They were thought to be extinct for decades until a pack was discovered in 2016. So there have only been two spotted in the wild, but there are some places around the world like the United States that have rescued what is to believed to be this breed of dog that went extinct and now they're in captivity to try to breed them, to expand them. They're clearly known for singing, you know, hence their name, hence the video we just watched. All right, moving right along, and number two, So many of you guys think that Bigfoot is an urban legend. Well, I know that it's real. Okay, I never saw it, but like I've, I've seen stuff like on TV and I think it's facts. Well, this creature that is like some kind of like half man, half ape that lives a lonely life in the wilderness. Well, that video was from 2020 in Utah. It's pretty far away, so it's hard to tell, but I can tell. That's Bigfoot confirmed, <laughs> for sure Bigfoot. But if that's how big that thing looks from far away, like imagine how big it is when you're up close, maybe like 20 feet. All I know is I wouldn't want to come across one. So this video was uploaded August 1st of this year, 2020. If it's not Bigfoot, then what is it? <sighs> Let me know in the comment section below what the heck creature did we just watch? And finally, in at number one. Okay, so that clip is obviously from a movie, if you guys didn't know. I didn't know at first, I thought it was real. But the Megalodon is said to be a real creature and we couldn't not put this on this list. Real and verified clip of what was thought to be a Megalodon underwater filmed in Japan. There are reports that the Megalodon was found a couple years ago in Marianas Trench, hence the movie, hence the inspiration for the movie. Well, it was found in the Mariana Trench a couple years ago, and there's all the fossil around this creature from some of the well-known sources like Shark Week and obviously Hollywood movies that hyped this creature up. Considering 95% of the ocean has not yet been discovered by humans, it could be very possible that this thing is real in 2020 and there's probably so many other creatures we have no idea about. All right, we're gonna kick this list off with uh, the smallest animal on this list, although it's by no means small for what it is. In this video uploaded by Exotics Lair, we see the cameraman come across a giant forest ant, and uh, boy oh boy, does this ant live up to its name. Imagine having a picnic in the forest and having a trail of these ants invade, uh, hailing from the forests of Southeast Asia. These ants can uh, get pretty big I mean, just look at it. At one point he puts it in a plastic container and you can really see the size of it compared to his hand. It, it, crazy. A regular sized everyday vanilla ant coming across uh, one of these would be like one of us coming across one of the giants from Attack on Titan. Poor ants. They live in a world where they might actually meet a giant version of their own kind, let alone, you know, all the other massive sized animals they have to deal with. Just imagine if there was a species of actual giant human beings roaming around somewhere in the forest. Number nine, the giant golden crowned flying fox. This is a, a species of mega bat native to the Philippines and is one of the largest bat species in the world. Its wingspan can reach up to five and a half feet or 1.7 meters. So this thing could easily wrap its wings around a small child. Now luckily these are one of those bat species that have those cute almost dog-like faces. If these things looked more like vampire bats, I'd straight up just never go to this part of the world. Watching these things fly through the air though, they look like gargoyles instead of bats. They have some uh, pretty gnarly claws too. They also unfortunately don't eat meat, which is uh, nice. The last thing you'd ever want to see is you know, watching one of these things swoop down and try to take a chomp out of your head or like fly off with your dog or something. The giant centipede. All right, so try to watch this next clip without uh, feeling your skin crawl. Not that you can really have much control over that, but just, I don't know, try to watch it without itching and just feeling icky. This is seeking out one of these adorable animals uh, for yourself. 
Number seven, the coconut crab. So these are the largest terrestrial crabs on the planet. They can weigh up to nine pounds and their legs can span more than three feet. It's not even just their size though. They have this creepy alien looking vibe going on. Their eyes also glow in the dark, which gives them a very eerie otherworldly look. You can just imagine walking around the beach at night and seeing these glowing eyes staring back at you. Anyway, you'll find these monstrous creatures lurking in the tropical regions of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. So uh, fair warning, if you decide to take a trip out there, just imagine sun tanning on the beach, you're half naked, you're as relaxed as ever, completely vulnerable, right? And then one of these things climbs over to you. Because yeah, again, they don't look like it, but these crabs uh, chill out on land. You can find them climbing on trees, attacking birds, chilling on garbage cans, like in this image here. Yeah, no thanks. I'm, I'm Really sorry, everyone's gonna have these creepy crawly nightmares after watching this video. Those are the worst. You know when you wake up and you just feel like there's stuff on you and you like check under your sheets just expecting there to be some kind of bug or something? I, I hate those mornings. So uh, yeah, let me know if that happens to you tomorrow. Number six, the golf course gator. All right, we've talked about a lot of animals that are large, but only on settling for just being kind of icky, but this is an animal that could easily devour you. This video was taken on a golf course in Naples, Florida, and shows what looks to be a dinosaur walking across the green. It, it almost looks fake, like it could be CG or something, like your eyes just can't even believe what they're seeing, but this is not a scene from Jurassic Park. This is actually a massive alligator walking across a golf course. At one point, the cameraman tells his buddy to, quote, get next to it for perspective. How about just run? Or at least stay as far away as possible if you really have to film it. We can we can see how big it is. Foliage in the background and the hole, that's that's perspective enough. I don't play golf, so what's, what's the hole called? It's just the dirt. Eat. You could see it. It's walking right next to it. It's like it's like the size of it. It's insane. Just imagine if this thing stopped and turned its head and just started booking it towards them. Gators can actually move surprisingly fast if they want to. Not as fast as the average human, thankfully, but fast enough, you know, enough to give you a heart attack if you saw it running towards you. The Tasmanian tiger leaps onto this list at number five. This species is also known as a thylacin, and they were a timid and a nocturnal creature who was considered to be a major pest and a dangerous threat to livestock. They look similar to a medium or large dog, except they had a stiff tail and an average normal pouch, kind of like a kangaroo. The government set up a bounty system between 1888 and 1909 in order to get rid of these species. So people went all over Australia killing the Tasmanian tiger and they officially went extinct in 1936. Or did they? Since its extinction, there have been many sightings of the Tasmanian tiger in Tasmania and Australia. It has been spotted so many times that a lot of people really believe that the Tasmanian tiger still exists today. Here's a clip that was taken in 1973, proving that these animals might still be alive. Take a look at this. Marching in at number four, the woolly mammoth. This would be amazing to see this alive today. These creatures were closely related to the Asian elephants. Woolly mammoths look a lot like them except for a couple major differences. They were covered with a thick coat of brown hair to keep them warm in the frigid weather. Even though the woolly mammoth went extinct around 10,000 years ago, we have a lot of information about them because of the permafrost in the Arctic preserved their bodies and left them in almost perfect condition. But what if I told you that these giant creatures might still be roaming the earth. There are a lot of people who have claimed that they saw a woolly mammoth in the modern times. In the late 1940s, frozen mammoths were discovered with fresh meat still in their mouths. And every once in a while, there are stories all over the internet of people claiming that they've seen an elephant creature with thick fur. Take a look at this video I have for you guys. Okay, so a man filmed what appears to be a woolly mammoth in Siberia. So what do you guys think? Did a woolly mammoth go extinct 4,000 years ago, or could they still be alive today? 
The Beijing Dolphin comes onto our list at number three. The Beijing Dolphin, or the Chinese River Dolphin, is the first dolphin to be declared extinct in modern times. This is just incredibly sad. It is the first large mammal species in 50 years to have gone extinct, and it was solely due to mankind. This animal was declared extinct in December 2006 due to harmful fishing practices, such as the use of gill nets, rolling hooks, or electrical stunning. There were efforts put in place to save this species, but none of them apparently worked. But even though there are thought to be extinct, a beige was spotted in 2007 by a team of researchers. Unfortunately, there was only that one sighting since the extinction, but it's still possible that these dolphins might still be alive today. Stepping into this list at number two, we have the mysterious Bigfoot, otherwise known as the Gigantopithecus. Their fossils indicate that they were the largest known primates that ever lived. They stood at a height of three meters or about 9.8 feet and they weighed as much as 540 to 600 kilograms, which is about 1,320 pounds. I mean, damn. Now, these are one creatures I don't know if I want to be alive today because they're pretty terrifying. However, scientists almost knows nothing about this mysterious ape. The first piece of evidence that this ape existed, it was discovered by a German paleontologist who found a large molar. Okay, so get this, it was dubbed as a dragon tooth. For years, this was the only trace of this ape, but since then, researchers have found dozens of teeth and a few partial jaws of the Gigantopithecus. It is believed that this giant creature went extinct because the forest shrank and they weren't able to find enough food to survive and reproduce. But some people believe that the Gigantopithecus survived and evolved into Bigfoot. The two creatures look very very similar and there have been many people reporting that they have seen this mysterious creature. Okay, so topping this list, in at number one, we have the mighty Megalodon. This species of shark was the largest to have ever lived. Paleontologists believe that the Megalodon was capable of growing up to at least 52 feet, which is three times as long as the longest great white shark ever. No one knows for sure what the Megalodon looked like because all that remains from the prehistoric monster are some teeth and a few vertebrae, but paleontologists are able to make a very educated guess. Originally, the Megalodon was believed to be wiped out by global warming. However, there have been many sightings all over the world by fishermen and sailors who have claimed to see this large shark. That couldn't be the great white shark because it was way too big. There was also a fossil of the Megalodon tooth found deep in the ocean, which means that they still might be living in the deep sea and occasionally they come up to the surface. I mean, after all, there's still 95% of the world's ocean that still hasn't been explored, which is insane to me. All I know for sure is that I would never want to have an encounter with these beasts. I imagine surfing and then bam, the Megalodon is right there behind you. Yeah, your lunch. Mm -hmm.